Hey, Bob WP here, and welcome to Do the Woo, the WooCommerce Builder Podcast. Today's show is brought to you by Avalara, your tax partner, whether it's for your own business or for your clients at avalara.com. I'll tell you more about Avalara later in the show, but I'd like to dive into today's episode where Bo Liebens, head of engineering at WooCommerce, joins host Jonathan Wold to talk all about Woo Express. Now, as a builder, you're going to learn about Bo's history in WordPress and WooCommerce, but also how Woo Express is not only an option you may want to recommend for those DIYers that you know, but also how it can work for you as a developer or an agency and also how this is a big step into tying the hosting ecosystem together. So let's get this show on the road. Welcome to another episode of Do The Woo. I'm your host, Jonathan Wold, today, and with me is uh, Bo Liebens. Bo, welcome to the, the show. Thanks, Jonathan. Happy to be here. So you are the head of engineering at WooCommerce at Automatic. Um, before we just jump into it, could you tell us just a little bit of like what uh, what does that mean? Like what do you what do you do in your role there? What does that mean to be the head of engineering? Sure, yeah. So um, a lot of people don't realize, but WooCommerce is actually a, a pretty complex business. Um, obviously, for for this audience, I think the the biggest thing that people are familiar with is the core WooCommerce software itself. So the open source package, the plugin that you can download and install on WordPress. Um, but we have uh, a lot of other solutions that sort of are part of that ecosystem. Um, so I'm sort of sitting across all of the engineering teams that are involved with all of those different things. So there are a bunch of different extensions. Um, WooCommerce Payments is one of the biggest ones. Um, but then we have you know shipping solutions. We have partner integrations with folks like Google and Meta and TikTok. Um, and then we have lots of uh, like point solutions for specific functionality that someone might need in running a store, whether that's, um, I don't know, taking deposits or different payment options, um, all sorts of things. So all of that rolls up within the WooCommerce business. And uh, my role as the head of engineering is really setting up all of the teams that work on all of that for success, um, making sure that we've got you know good processes in place, that we're keeping on top of quality, that we have a constant stream of releases coming out across all of those different things. Uh, so there's just a lot of logistics on that sort of thing. Uh, and then it's working working with those teams. You know, we're a, we're an engineering centric company, so it's uh, developing those individuals, um, improving their own performance and their ability to get great work done, um, and then also coordinating outside of the company with the broader WooCommerce and WordPress uh, community and ecosystem. So we sort of think of a community, uh, when we say that, we tend to mean like the direct folks who are contributing to, let's say, WooCommerce or WordPress, whether that's code or documentation or translations. And then ecosystem, we tend to use to sort of refer more broadly to people who are building with those solutions. So maybe it's someone who's creating a WooCommerce store for someone else. Um, so that sort of educating and communicating with that that broader ecosystem as well. I'm glad you mentioned the ecosystem. It's one of the things that I've noticed when you think about WooCommerce, if you don't know and you're not paying attention, it's like, oh, it's just a plugin. Like there, there's a whole lot that goes behind the scenes to to make that work. And then when you as soon as you touch on the ecosystem itself, you mentioned the partners, these these integrations, which themselves are, can be even considered entire businesses. There's, there's just a, a whole lot more to it. And then you have, of course, the community aspect of it and the relationship with third parties. There's a lot to it. Uh, how did you, uh, you've been at this for a bit. Like when did WooCommerce first come onto the radar for you? Yeah, uh, great question. So I, I won't bore you all with my like complete origin story, uh, but needless to say, I've been, been involved with WordPress itself since kind of the mid 2000s and started off uh, just like a personal interest with blogging and with this interesting open source project that was making that more accessible. Um, and so got into WordPress and then found myself uh, doing consulting work at some point. 
attempted to create my own startup that was based on uh, based on sort of customizing WordPress. Ah. Uh, this was actually in the WordPress MU days. Ah, yes. um, so it was WordPress, MU, and BB Press all tied up together and heavily customized. Uh, so I found myself doing things that WordPress wasn't fully capable of doing at the time. Um, and then that sort of set me down the path of working uh, at some point with Automatic. Uh, so I joined Automatic in 2009. Uh, so actually coming up on uh, 14 years in about a month, I think it is. Yeah, so it's been a while. Um, and I've worked in all different parts of Automatic, uh, including WordPress.com. I worked on Gravatar. I've worked on a bunch of things. Um, was on the team that made the first version of Jetpack. Uh, and then ended up actually uh, leading all of the Jetpack efforts for a few years. And right about four years ago now, um, switched over to WooCommerce. Uh, basically, it was after Automatic had acquired WooCommerce. And um, we were sort of ramping up the investment there and you know figuring out how we could really make this like the solution for commerce on WordPress. And... Um, so within Automatic, we were moving some people from the rest of Automatic into WooCommerce, um, and I was one of those. And so I sort of stepped into uh, what ended up being the beginnings of this role that I'm in now, uh, about four years ago. Um, and that was a really fun transition for me because I had been sort of tangentially involved with WooCommerce okay. right after we uh, acquired it. Um, that was really the first contact I'd had with it myself. Um, and so my view at the time was was kind of external but internal, if you like. Yep. Um, so I was looking at WooCommerce from the perspective of the rest of Automatic and thinking like, oh, how can we leverage the things that we've learned or the things that we're good at within Automatic to help accelerate the growth of this WooCommerce thing? I like that a lot. It's interesting because you, you knew WordPress well at that point. You had a lot of that that deep context. And of course, having been in Automatic already for quite some time, you had seen a lot of the ways that Automatic does things. You, you'd experienced a lot of the scale, challenges, and opportunities. So Woo was newer to you at the time, but you had that, that deeper WordPress context. Do you, do you recall any of your initial observations? Like At that point, Woo already was fairly large as an ecosystem. There was a lot of, lot sort of around it. So it, it already had, at least from my perspective, some fairly unique characteristics. Do you recall any of your initial impressions or observations of looking at that ecosystem from that perspective yeah definitely um i think probably two of the things that stand out in my memory um would be one that when i looked at woocommerce i saw immediately this is like wordpress another whole layer of wordpress it's got its own it's like a fractal sort of uh, expansion if you like it's like another whole platform built on top of this platform it's got its own ecosystem of what we call extensions, which are really just WordPress plugins that specifically extend WooCommerce. It's got developers who really focus just on WooCommerce. They're not really that uh, focused on WordPress itself. Um, so it was really like this, this very sort of fractal version of the entire WordPress ecosystem. Um, and that was really interesting. Also kind of daunting, to be honest, because you know, WordPress is huge. Um, you know, it's thousands and thousands of contributors. Um, there's a lot that goes into making WordPress a big, successful community. Um, and there was another whole version of that for WooCommerce. So that was probably the first one. And then more from the automatic perspective, something that I saw was that some of the things we did with, we do within, within automatic is build services. So rather than specific pieces of code that you deploy on a WordPress site, we are looking at like, well, how can we host that? And how can we provide functionality that you can't really deliver in a single plugin, um, but you can deliver if you've got this huge network of computers. And so we can do things like Akismet, for example, or uh, Jetpack's backup services, or things that you need from the cloud. And that there wasn't a lot of that in the WooCommerce space other than payments. Um, you know, payments sort of by definition happen on another server somewhere, whether that's, you know, off on Stripe or PayPal or Square. Um, so that that was definitely there, but that there weren't a lot of those. Um, there wasn't a very coordinated approach to that in the WooCommerce space. So most things were just were pieces of code 
deployed as extensions that existed within the context of a single WooCommerce store. Um, and sometimes that, you know, that contributes to the complexity of running a large scale WooCommerce store because now you're responsible for all of that complexity. Uh, so that seemed like an interesting opportunity to, to maybe move some of that over time. It's interesting to, to notice that there are quite a few people, at least anecdotally, and I, I suspect the uh, the data would back it up, that come into WooCommerce and don't even really know that much about WordPress. To just to, to anchor that point of like, it's really, it's, it's, it's clearly within WordPress, it's just also very much its own thing. And that's, that brings interesting challenges. Uh, to me, at least observationally, there is this degree to which like it wasn't it wasn't planned that way from the beginning like WooCommerce like starting out with Woo themes and it was like almost an- incidental like oh we should build a little bit of this and then right place right time and sort of growing and then you just look at okay there's an entire ecosystem and in your opening talking about the head of what your your role is the the scope of your responsibilities there's just a lot to it you can't like you can't. Well, you could just make big, quick moves. In general, though, as we find with the WordPress project, it's like uh, it's in generally just not in the best interest of the ecosystem as a whole to move very quickly. You have to be very deliberate, and people can be frustrated. Where it's like, hey, why can't WooCommerce just like get something done quickly? And there are things that you can move fast on, but I think that that complexity of this ecosystem as a whole, and that there's so many moving parts, means that if you're going to be do a good job, that you have to consider a lot, and you need to be deliberate. And yeah. I can see that that brings a curious realm of challenges into the mix. Yeah. I, could, I mean, I think something that immediately comes to mind when you say that is uh, the whole effort that we've had to deliver HPOS, high performance auto storage. Um, you know, we got a lot of feedback over the years of like, why haven't you done this yet? Um, you know, obviously this is a, this is a thing people want it. Um, you know, we, there was even a, a liquid web uh, extension out there for many years that that did a version of this, and so a lot of developers just sort of uh, didn't seem to understand why we wouldn't just ship that and be done with it. Um, and what it came down to really was this ecosystem question: was the technical solution certainly not simple, um, but it's not, uh, you know, it's very attainable to technically solve this problem. It's very doable. Um, what was much more complex was how do we set it up so that we can safely deliver this to an ecosystem where people expect to just click an update button on on WordPress and update their WooCommerce so we can't just change the database out from under them. Um, plus, they have all these different extensions. Um, I don't know what the latest number is, but I know at some point we saw the average was that uh, most WooCommerce stores had at least 17 different plugins. Um anywhere up to hundreds. We've literally seen sites running hundreds of plugins. Um, and we don't have control over those. So we need to give uh, a migration path for people to get to HPOS without breaking their store along the way. Um, and that that's the complex bit. It was actually the migration, the rollout, ecosystem adoption. And we're still working on all of that, uh, even though the technical solution is there. So on a single site where you control every part of uh, every piece of code that's running there, it's relatively simple to just switch to HPOS. Um, but doing it out into an ecosystem is much more complicated. Um, and we take that really seriously. You know, we, we, do, uh, we align very closely with the ethos of the WordPress community. So things like backwards compatibility are really important to us, um, being very user-centric and even though we are very much a developer tool and developers use WooCommerce to build complex commerce solutions, um, at the end of the day, we do make try to make sure that that merchant experience is excellent um, and that merchants can run their own store on a day-to-day basis. And so we need to do things in a way that's understandable for them. Um, like I said, that's safe. They can click that update button and not have problems. Um, and all of that's really difficult. You know, it's, it's not like running it in a SaaS environment where we just control the stack end to end and we can just roll out an update and roll it back if there's a problem. Um, so yeah, there's a lot to it. I imagine that your services background and some of like the SaaS experience has probably helped you because at the end of the day, 
like, and this is this is perhaps some of the tension that your typical WordPress or WooCommerce developer wouldn't appreciate. Like, uh, when you take more of a services background and context, the end users have that expectation of not being disrupted, right? Like, it's right. it's going to continue working. So you're in this little bit of a, a hybrid. That, I mean, it's not even just a little bit where it's like you. There's a lot of um, non control that you have over what end users are going to do with it. Yet also this expectation that when they click update, it's going to just work. And Absolutely. Yeah. If nothing else, that's going to just add more time to <laughs> figuring out like how you navigate all that. Yeah, it yeah. really does. Um, and I'll say like my experience working on Jetpack in particular was really useful with that because it is such a hybrid of obviously there is code that goes out um, and they deliver every month. Um, which is actually what we've shifted to with WooCommerce over time. Um, so, you know, there is a certain amount of code that is delivered every month that needs to be stable, it needs to be reliable, you need to be able to click that update button. And then we also have uh, all of the services. And so you have that, well, this we can deploy at any time, but then it depends on what the client, what version of the client is interacting with the server. So there's all sorts of complexity there. Um, and there's interesting trade-offs of of how you deliver things in each place as well. Um, so it's been it's been interesting. <laughs> um, so my last on the, like the personal line. So you've had fourteen almost fourteen years now at Automatic. Uh, you've experienced a wide range of things. You're now like all in on Woo. You've been so for for quite a few years now. What what do you enjoy most like in the work that you do? Mm. I think the the biggest thing with WooCommerce in particular um, is the direct tie to people's livelihoods. Uh, um, yeah, that's a, that's really I don't know. That's very exciting. It's obviously comes with a like a high degree of of trust, whether they know it or not, um, and a, sort of a high degree of responsibility. Um, but I really enjoy that, and uh, like the way it's, it's much more visible and sort of visceral. Um, how WooCommerce impacts people's livelihoods. Uh, with WordPress, it was always there was always an element of that, but often it's a little more disconnected. Um, when you can put dollar signs very directly on your involvement and your impact on someone else, um, that starts that's very very direct and very real. Um, and so it's it's also just uh, really fun to transact on something and then realize that it's WooCommerce. Um, so my favorite recent example is there's a really cool custom bike shop here in Denver um, called Rodeo Adventure Labs. So they make custom bikes and I bought a bike bag from them um, and realized that it was WooCommerce. And so I reached out to them and was like, hey, that's cool. You use WooCommerce. You know, I work on that. Um, and I ended up actually going and spending a couple of hours sitting down with the founder and like talking through their WooCommerce store and like getting feedback from them and stuff. And so that sort of connection is just is like really cool and really like keeps me going. That's cool. So Woo is always working on a bunch of different things, but one particular project that you have going on is this thing called Woo Express. Would you, for people who have no context yet, would you, what, what is Woo Express? Yeah. So Woo Express is uh, a simpler sort of streamlined version of getting up and running with WooCommerce and with some of the solutions that we see as being really key or really important to, to many merchants. Um, so you can think of it as it's almost kind of like a version of WordPress.com is to open source WordPress, where hosting is taken care of for you. There's a bunch of additional functionality that's included. Um, and we try to make it just much easier to get onboarded, up and running. It's a bit more opinionated about here are these solutions that you should use um, and walks you through the process a bit more. Excellent. What what was the original motivation for it? Like, what uh, what problem did you sort of set out to solve? Mm, there's versions of this have uh, I think been sort of attempted by different web hosts over the years, um, and it's something that we've heard over and over and over is that when merchants try to set up their own store as opposed to working with a developer who sets it up for them, um, they tend to just be overwhelmed by the range of options. And quite honestly, the complexity of setting up a full commerce experience. Um, so they don't know which extensions to pick. They don't know how to configure things. Um, they maybe don't even understand hosting, uh, especially these days. Folks are sort of expecting more and more that um, things just work on the internet, right? That you can just fill out a form and it'll just work. 
And so we, over the years, we've had a lot of feedback that just getting up and running with WooCommerce is, is too complicated for people. And so this is a, this is a, our, our swing at solving that problem. Uh, so enabling merchants who want to set up their own store to get up and running and, and get moving a little faster than they could otherwise. Want to be a hero when it comes to your clients? You built the site, now you want to make sure that with your clients Woo Shop, that they are insured that they have accurate sales tax rates in place, especially in case of an audit. Avalara is a leader in automating sales tax and compliance for businesses selling online, both big and small. If you're setting up a new WooCommerce site, get your clients set for sales. If you currently manage several client sites, it may be time to make that recommendation. Either way, get their WooCommerce extension and let your clients take advantage of a 60-day free trial. There's also great resources for either you or your clients on their site where you can learn more about sales tax calculation, among other services like returns and exemptions. So for peace of mind, avalera.com has you covered. How are you currently thinking about how you'd measure the success of an initiative? So you're taking the swing. It makes sense. There's a lot of effort that's gone into it. If this goes well, how do you see this impact in the ecosystem? Yeah, that's an interesting one. So I think the the biggest thing that we're going for here is we should, through this, through Woo Express, we should be able to get more active merchants. So people who are, have a store, it's set up, they're functioning in some way, um, and really just sort of increase the size of the pie for everyone, if you like. Um, because what we're seeing at the moment is a ton of people come, for example, to WooCommerce.com. To your point earlier of like, not everyone comes to this through the WordPress community. So people come directly to WooCommerce.com and they're expecting to get up and running with this thing called WooCommerce. And uh, we see a lot of them don't successfully get up and running. They come to a, come to the door, maybe they start dabbling and it just feels too complex. And so they move on to something else. And so this is a chance for us to try and help more of those people successfully get up and running. And then once their business starts growing, um, that's when they get into customization or you know unique new functionality or whatever it is. Now, there's an interesting tension here because if you take the builder community as a whole, subconsciously or not, there's a, some degree to which um, freelancers, the agencies, et cetera, rely on the fact that Woo is compl- can be complicated to configure as a way that they can, okay, we'll take care of this for you. So there is some degree here to the which if you're successful, you're eliminating work for some of these freelancers. Um, it, I think it's easy to talk about like where I go immediately is the meta view to your point about like the importance of increasing the pie as a whole, but there's a real tension there. And I'm curious, like, how, how do you think about that? Just, just navigating the, the needs of the builder community who somewhat relies on the complexity with the needs of the merchants who we don't want to see churn out of the Woo ecosystem. Yeah, and, and that's, I think, what you just said at the end of that bit is a bit more like the way we look at it, is if we rely on WooCommerce being complicated and hard to use, people are just not going to choose it in the long run. And so if if the area that people are making their money in um, as uh, developers or builders or freelancers um, if it's purely in that get it set up and like know how to navigate this complex thing that's probably not very sustainable for anyone and so what we hear from more most freelancers is that's not what they enjoy doing either they actually enjoy more of the like custom solution or like really tailoring something to specific workflows or helping people uh, set up and run their business in, in like more unique ways. And all of that's still possible on Woo Express. Um, so we actually think Woo Express, um, and it's powered by WordPress.com at the moment. So the way that it's built is it's actually leveraging the uh, WP Cloud infrastructure that powers the sort of more advanced sites on WordPress.com. And a lot of cool things come with that that really speak to the needs of developers. There's some that I can't talk about just yet, um, but there's some things like GitHub and SSH access, and you can install any other plugin or extension or theme on there. 
So you have all of that power available to you, but what you get is some of the more monotonous bits and pieces taken care of. Uh, so there's definitely nothing stopping developers from using Woo Express as a much, quite honestly, much cheaper um, and much better put together starting point to create sites for their customers and then tailoring them from there. I'm glad you mentioned WP Cloud. I think it's a good example. Like Automatic's a big organization. There's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of complexity. There's a lot of history, a lot of different initiatives and things that have been tried. I, I really like the positioning of WP Cloud. It's going to be interesting to see how it, p- it plays out over time, where like one of, one of the natural tensions here, you've mentioned some of the other hosting companies that have tried to like do some of their own. Like, and so we're trying to solve this problem in different ways. There's a much larger ecosystem than even like what what WooCommerce.com touches directly and what WordPress.com touches. And so you're in this interesting role as a business of being a custodian for the broader ecosystem and having to make some decisions that maybe not everyone's going to like, yet you have to, to do your jobs effectively, you have to think about the bigger picture in the long term. And what I like about the positioning of projects like WP Cloud and, and being involved in something like this is that at the end of the day, it's a project anchored on growing the ecosystem as a whole. And like more and more hosting companies are looking at becoming like partners with WP Cloud. And I can see future states where what you're building now with Woo Express can end up becoming the basis that other hosts could use in their offerings. And you're building towards more sort of uniformity towards it. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one of the things that we're uh, we're already learning, quite honestly, with with building Woo Express is what works for merchants. Um, we're in kind of an interesting spot where I think historically we've taken a bit more of a like put things out into the ecosystem and let them figure it out sort of an approach. Um, and what this gives us is an opportunity to really focus on a more complete merchant experience and deeply understand what works and what doesn't for merchants, um, whether that's in the core WooCommerce software itself or in any of the extensions and other solutions that we bundle in there. Um, and so we're very much using this as a way to drive improvements on the merchant experience in WooCommerce core. So that'll be available to everyone, including all other hosts. Um, but it also means that as a, as a package, we can start to say, you know, because we do partner with other hosts, we work with them very directly. And we can say, hey, look, this stuff works better. You know, if you bundle all of this together, if you offer this with a free trial, if you keep your pricing in this sort of range, whatever it is, um, the learnings that we have from doing this ourselves, absolutely we intend to share this with hosts and work with other hosts um, to implement this for the whole ecosystem. At the end of the day, quite honestly, we, we Automatic, are a relatively small part of the whole WordPress and WooCommerce ecosystem. Um, obviously, we, we play a certain role, um, but there are way more hosts out there. There are people doing their own things, building their own solutions. Um, and we know we're just a part of that. One of the things that stood out to me from my time at Woo was talking to like hosts in like other countries where I became aware and, and who are competing directly with like, Shopify and winning and, and other proprietary platforms and, and a big part of it, and what they loved about WordPress and WooCommerce was their, their ability to create solutions that were even more tailored to the needs of their local ecosystem. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that's that's one of the things where it's like, it, it, and it struck me then, and it stuck with me since, that's one of the strengths of, it's a, there's a lot of challenges in a decentralized ecosystem, but it's one of the core strengths is that you can have like a bunch of different players who are working together, more coordination needed, more work on your part and thinking about releases and like how we manage all this. But it's ultimately a much more resilient setup that is able to actually compete and win against projects like Shopify that by somewhat by design are much more homogenous in nature. And like they, they, they're having to think globally and miss the opportunities to really like fine tune and cater something and especially in the e-commerce realm because a lot of it comes down to the partnerships the payment gateways yeah. the the logistics sides of things like there's all the stuff that has to come together and yeah so it's 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 very challenging and i think it's easy to miss for folks and they can complain it's like well if you take a bigger a broader view though this is a global ecosystem with unique local needs and 
I, it was it was interesting for me to see WooCommerce being able to win very effectively in some of those markets. And I I love that, at least from my perspective, it feels like Woo as a business is embracing that and saying, okay, we need to make moves. We need to move the ecosystem forward. We need to model things. And we're also recognizing that it's a lot more than just us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I think um, you mentioned payments and logistics. I think those are two perfect examples uh, where, especially in the commerce space, you know, we could theoretically, uh, as a business, try to go to every single local market and have, you know, cover every payment option and delivery or carrier option, and we would never be able to. <laughs> we would need so many people writing so much code to try and produce all of those solutions. And we don't really have any desire to do that. Um, we can, like you said, we can model what a good solution looks like. And we can say, you know, here's our, our personal uh, best-in-class version that is available in certain markets, covers certain needs. Um, but we're always going to leave things open to the ecosystem to say, oh, there's, I don't know, I, I'm from Western Australia originally. Like maybe there's some thing that is blowing up in Western Australia and people are using a very specific payment method and there's some local like bicycle or drone courier or whatever it is. And someone there can build solutions for WooCommerce for that and probably corner the market in Western Australia. Um, and that's awesome. We love that. Uh, and, you know, some of our bigger competitors, it, that's going to be the very, very, very long tail that they will maybe get to someday, but probably not. And so, yeah, probably not is the answer. Um, and so if, if WooCommerce can be the solution for those people, that's that's what we're all about. You know, that's that goes to the core of the idea of democratizing commerce for me. Um, my guess is that you've been working towards this Woo Express concept for a while. What are what are some of the challenges that, um, uh, we, and we've touched on some of them at a high level, but are there any particular challenges that have stood out to you in, in putting this together? I don't, I don't know if it was an unexpected challenge, um, but I'll say that what was the kind of the most confronting challenge was the reality of what happens when you take a bunch of WooCommerce solutions and put them together. Is that it's it's not always the best experience, um, and that's where we've got we have done a lot of work, and we've got a lot more work to do. Um, is just the reality of yeah taking uh, you know the architecture of WordPress and and thus WooCommerce is that you have these core packages, and then you have all of these extra plugins, um, and they don't always play as nicely together as you would like. Um, <laughs> that's generous. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Whether that's, you know, could be on the UI level and it could yeah. just be, what do they look like? Does it feel like a single product? Um, it could be functionality. You know, if you install, uh, we have a, a saying internally that, uh, that I love, which uh, one of our engineering leaders refers to like one plus one shouldn't equal two, it should equal 11. And, you know, we've got, if you install, uh, what's a good example? let's say um, a gift card plugin with a subscriptions plugin. You might expect that you could pay for a subscription with a gift card, but can you? Right. Not sure. Um, or, you know, can you buy a gift card on subscription? So there's all of these sorts of things where, like, you know, sometimes one plus one just equals two and they're both there separately you can use gift card functionality you can use subscriptions functionality but what would it mean if one plus one equaled 11 um so that sort of interaction is, a, is another whole layer of uh complexity and interesting <laughs> it brings the tension as well of like what what do you put in core versus what do you leave to extensions what do you manage directly at woocommerce as you guys have acquired quite a few of these extensions versus what do you, you know, like Im like focus on third parties to do and I suspect, and this is part of it, is that there aren't easy answers to a lot of this, where it's like there's benefits and trade-offs to each approach. If you take things in-house, that can be great in terms of being able to solve compatibility issues, but it also can come down to, well, then you might not have all the resources. Now you have to manage less resources across a bunch, and then an extension can end up being neglected. Uh, so there's these you know, benefits and trade-offs. Like, How do you navigate uh, making those kind of decisions when you have finite resources to work with? Yeah, it's it's really hard. Um, <laughs> as as you said, there's there's often not good answers, um, or and it's more a matter of just sort of picking the one that's the least bad at the moment, um, or that you can you can live with for now, and that we think 
provides as much value as possible without being impossible to sustain. But yeah, I think the the ones that you just touched on, like what do we put in core? We try to keep core very similar to WordPress. Um, we follow a similar sort of mentality. We try to keep core relatively lean. And what we're doing is trying to just keep it flexible and keep it capable. So we talk a lot internally about capabilities. So what what is core capable of supporting? Doesn't mean it has to do it, um, but it should allow a developer to build a solution in to then do a thing. So we do try and keep core relatively lean. Um, one thing that you've probably seen if you've set up a new Woo store recently is that in the onboarding experience, we're trying to sort of surface more of these optional things and then install them on demand. So we don't have to deliver them in the pa- in the core package. You don't have to use them if you don't want to. Um, but if you're if you want those solutions, then they they're very accessible. This this feels like a part of the key opportunity that you have with a project like Woo Express is to have you, you continue to have the core and rather and, and at least from an outside perspective, it makes a lot of sense that you do it this way. You don't take a thing like Woo Express and focus on bacon into core. You have it as a, a supplement or a complement that is being driven towards through through host, through WordPress.com, et cetera, that gives that opinionated, curated, like this is what we think is the best way to use Woo without taking away choice. Right. And let's so there's it's an interesting tension, but I can see that that working well over time where it's like because there's quite a few end users who don't know that they might someday care about the flexibility in Woo. They just want to get something. They just want results. They're they're trying to build a business, right? And it if you just drop them in WooCommerce and like here's all the extensions you could want, like that's that's probably not helping them win. Yeah. So not at all. Yeah. And yeah. like you said, the that flexibility over time, often you don't know upfront what flexibility you do or don't need, right? You just want to get a thing started um, and you probably just want to sell a couple of products. And if we look at what we've got, often those are physical products. You might be dealing with like purely local delivery, might be a relatively simple scenario, but hopefully you're successful. And then you want to, I don't know, ship to a different state or to a different country and you want to accept different payment methods and maybe you start doing more custom products or you have different business workflows or whatever it is and that's when that flexibility is really important so we do still very much want to keep that available Um, like that is the point of woocommerce in a lot of ways Uh, so that's really important to protect for us like we talked about earlier we as as automatic or as woocommerce we're never going to have all of those solutions ourselves if we restrict things in a way that we have to be the ones to provide those solutions, um, that doesn't end up being good for anyone. No. So. so for builders who are listening, so we have, you know, we have your freelancers, your agencies, you also have a whole bunch of people who are building products for WooCommerce. Mm-hmm. How do you want them to think about Woo Express? Yeah, good question. So I mentioned earlier, like there's nothing stopping developers from using Woo Express as sort of a starting point for building solutions for people. Um, so I, I think that is the, the first thing that I would say is if you're out there trying to figure out hosting and trying to figure out how to get like the first set of, of uh, kind of out of the box functionality up and running for WooCommerce stores, um, Woo Express is going to be a great place to start with that. Uh, like I said, it's, it's based on WordPress.com. So uh, all of the hosting benefits that come with that uh, come with Woo Express, including really, uh, honestly, pretty incredible performance um, and very, very generous uh, traffic allowances and all of that sort of thing. Um, we've been hosting WordPress powered sites for a long time at this point, uh, and we're pretty good at it. So, at, as a sort of hosting foundation, I think WordPress.com is uh, like we couldn't ask for a better place to start with this cool so now when you think about the broader like hosting ecosystem for which woo is increasingly a big part of it like how do you want them to think about woo express i'm hoping that they look at it as like somewhat inspirational and like oh this is what a really good woo experience can look like Um, one of the things quite honestly that we've seen uh when we look around is that getting up and running on a host if you go to a host and you specifically want to run a woocommerce store it can be pretty difficult to get through the whole experience of 
you know, creating all of your accounts, registering a domain, whatever it is, um, and then picking all of the solutions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we're hoping to really set kind of a best in class example and then work with those hosts to say, okay, how can you do similarly? Um, and how can we make it, you know, mutually beneficial for the host and us, for our shared merchants? Um, because eventually those merchants probably end up interacting with something else in the Woo ecosystem. And so we all want to uh, make sure that we're enabling that in every direction. There's a curious tension there because in order for you to set a best in class example, there is this like, okay, we're going to take a lead here. We're going to like be opinionated and like and drive towards this. And at, at the same time, as we alluded to earlier, there's opportunities for hosts to say, hey, we're going to take that because this is what I like again about the WP cloud positioning. We're going to take that and we're going to do an even better thing for our local market, for the audience, for the folks that we're serving. Right. So it's like, they can take what you've done and that's where the partnership concept comes into it, where it's like, you, you have to, there's some risk involved into it. If you just sort of let the ecosystem kind of do whatever, that's fine. Then it's going to be whatever it's going to be for you to do this best in class example gives a chance for you to sort of set a higher bar. Like, Hey, this is based on everything that we're seeing. This is what we think is the best. And then if you get the positioning right, which I see you guys move in that direction, it's an invitation for builders, for the hosting ecosystem to say, okay, we see that that makes sense. And you're like, yeah, we'd love for you to use this, use this as a starting point, do even more for the market that you serve. Yeah. And let's work together on this. I yeah, like absolutely. And those markets, uh, like just to just to be explicit about it, you know, they're not necessarily just uh, geographical markets. You know, it might be some host is going to target people setting up very specific types of stores, whether it's, I don't know, like time booking based stores, or they might be real estate stores, or I don't, I don't know, whatever it is, uh, they might have some specific niche, some specific market that they're really interested in serving. And so they might learn from what we've done and say, okay, you know, we are targeting a certain space with what we're doing with Woo Express, And that might not be at all what they're targeting, but they can take pieces of, of what they can learn from us and then say that, but with this other customization to suit this space. Yep. And that's totally fine. Great by us. <laughs> Yeah, and and a ton of opportunity, and I love that you have the uh, the multi mu background because that's one of the I think that it's one of the things I'm most excited about too is like there's so much opportunity for entrepreneurs to come in and say okay we're going to serve these smaller markets it could even just be a couple thousand customers in a particular market and like you said it doesn't have to be anything to do with geography that you can build some pretty incredible solutions on WooCommerce on WordPress that they don't even have to know are those things. It's, it's, can, we, it's increasingly like SaaS-like opportunities that just make sense to build within this WordPress mm -hmm. ecosystem. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Yeah, and there were versions of that like much earlier on in the WordPress space too, right? Like people had sort of pre-packaged targeted solutions. Like I mentioned real estate because that was one, that's an example in my head that I forget the company's name, but years ago, I remember interacting with a group that they just like churned out real estate sites based on WordPress. And they had a specific set of plugins and bits and, and like configuration that they used. I think they had a custom theme um, and they could just make real estate sites all day long, you know, and they served that market very, very specifically and quite successfully. Um, and that's the sort of thing that I think over time we see that, or we will see that more um, with commerce solutions as well where it's just a version of that. And it's, you know, what are their specific financial needs or business needs or whatever it is. Now, one of the challenges and one of the curious things, I'll put it this way about WooCommerce, the business, like, so you, you do a lot of work on the platform. Um, you, you take responsibility for, there's a lot of engineering, there's a lot of resources that go into this. You also still have an entire community of people that can contribute, that get involved in different ways and shapes. But, but in some senses, I, I think, there's, there, there's at least definitely a feel of WordPress or of WooCommerce being a lot more like commercially driven than say like the WordPress project. And that's, it's, it is a reality, right? At the same time, you know, and there's like, you know, like the, the community's involvement is a big part of like what makes this all work. So that, I understand that there's a, a contribution day coming up. Can you tell us a bit about that? Your just thoughts on that? 
Yeah, definitely. Um, I'll, I'll say like, to your point, like absolutely, there is a bit of a difference in that WordPress itself is fundamentally, it has the WordPress foundation. So it is driven by a community driven group. Um, whereas WooCommerce also is open source, but is fundamentally owned and driven by automatic as a, as a commercial entity. Um, but to your point, um, our fundamental belief is that the only way that that is successful is if it's got a thriving ecosystem. And the only way to get that is a thriving community. Um, and that that's the, the best way for this, um, uh, product to exist, but also for this space to be served. Um, and so you mentioned a contributor day. Um, some, we, we internally have acknowledged actually that we need to engage more with our community and we need to empower them more. We need to give them more direction because um, we've actually got people asking, how can they help? How can they contribute? And sometimes we're not able to tell them, which is, you know, not the best. Um, so uh, coming up, on the 19th, um, we've got a contributor day. And because we're both a global company and a global community, we're running it for 24 hours. Um, so we'll have a few check-ins throughout that time. Um, we will have a ton of people internally who are just online and their, wor their work day that day is, you know, you're there to help the community. You're there to help them try and get stuff merged, to answer questions, to point them in the right direction, to help them get their development environment set up, whatever it is. I haven't counted internally, but I know we've got at least about six teams worth of people. So it's probably 50-ish folks, maybe a little more, who basically that, that entire workday, that will be what they're doing. Awesome. And then we're trying to get as much of that merged as possible, um, obviously, assuming it's all uh, well-written and passes tests and everything else, to get as much of that work merged so that those folks can see their work delivered in WooCommerce, um, ready for the next release after that. Awesome. It's Yeah, it's going to be fun. We're really looking forward to it. Uh, I know we'll add a link in the show notes, but um, developer.woocommerce.com is where you can find out more about that. And there'll be at least a couple more posts. We'll coordinate that in our community Slack channel. And like I said, it'll be for 24 hours. It, to be honest, it'll probably go longer than that, um, but formally organized for 24 hours. So we're really looking forward to it. I love it. Well, Bo, thanks for all that you, you've uh, been doing and your involvement in the space and your care for uh, the future of it all. If folks are interested in learning more about you, what's the, what's the best way for them to do so? Well, I wish I could say I blogged more frequently. Um, <laughs> I do have bo.blog, so B-E-A-U.blog. Um, you can go there. And then, um, I don't know, you can find me on GitHub, on Twitter. Uh, all of those things are linked from that site. So cool. that's probably the best place to start. Excellent. Well, Bo, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, good luck. I wish, we're looking forward to seeing what happens with Woo Express and the upcoming Community Day. And we'll talk to you again. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Hey, Bob WP again. I love how Woo Express is bringing you to the table opportunities for users, builders, and yes, hosting companies. Be fascinating to watch how this all transpires into making the Woo hosting space even more powerful. One more shout out to our pod friend Avalara for their support of our community. Check them out at avalara.com. Always appreciate you spreading the word about Do the Woo. And until next time, keep on doing the woo.